Our news is brought to you by Alive. Believe in best. Coming up on Our News, ending the Jubilee visit to the Bahamas, the Royals touching down on Grand Bahama and Abaco. Plus, Bahamian officials host a state reception fit for royalty. And later, local farmers to receive 21st century training. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Kendino Knowles. We begin with continued coverage of the royal visit as the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge are headed home tonight following their three-day visit to the Bahamas and tour of the region. The visit in celebration of the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. This was the first official visit to the Bahamas for William and Kate, including visits to New Providence, Abaco, and a final stop in Grand Bahama this afternoon with a visit to Coral Vida. The Duke and Duchess also touching down in Grand Bahama, as we said earlier today, where four-year-old Callie Ferguson and Jarion Ford greeted them and presented flowers to Duchess Kate. It was then on to Grand Bahama's children home, which was heavily damaged in Hurricane Dorian. On the way, Grand Bahamians and Brits lined the route. This spectator, Kay Harvey, speaking with our news about her Queen's honor. It's for teaching here for a long time and for communion, community involvement. I was president of the local theatre several times. And then I worked for Basra, I don't even know, Bahamas Air Sea Rescue. They have a swim here every year and I've done it for about 30 years. So it's like a combination of community involvement. Well, thank you for your service too. Yeah, I, got it. I didn't get it from the Queen. I got it from the Governor General. Oh, yeah. Okay. A stalwart of the it's still the Queen. Love it. It's beautiful. From there, it was on to Coral Vida. Our news speaking with the co founder and chief officer, Tim Teicher, about the significance of the visit. Where we grow corals to restore dying reefs in the Bahamas and hopefully all around the world. And we're incredibly honored and excited to be having the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge come visit the coral farm here today. The final stop was a trip to Peterson's Key on board a catamaran. Stay with our news for the complete recap on the Grand Bahama trip. And the Duke and Duchess also traveling to Abaco, one of the island's hardest hit by Hurricane Dorian. There, the royals got a first-hand look of the damage two years since the storm. Bertany McDermott, who was in Abaco, reports tonight that William and Kate also got to have a little fun. The Royals starting the second full day of their Bohemian visit in storm-stricken Abaco. The first stop, the Daystar Bible Church in Dundastown, Abaco, to see Hurricane Dorian recovery up close. Local pastor Bishop Silbert Mills giving a sombering picture of the damage. No, Bishop, this, this one noticeably was a lot stronger and worse than anyone had ever experienced before in the Bahamas. I, I never experienced in the Atlantic. Right. Mills says the moment allowed him to show the Royals that nothing escapes Dorian. Friendship Tabernacle Church occupied the property for 65 years before moving. It has significant historical value, a gift from King George VI. This means a whole lot to see British royalty come back to a place that is so connected to the British in regards to uh, this property. It was also a time to sit with members of the community. Next, a short drive to Memorial Gardens for a ceremony and wreath laying. The site commemorates Hurricane Dorian victims. The visit was not short on fanfare from Abaconians and visitors. The royal visit is symbolic, you know, because we are still part of the Commonwealth. And it shows that there are persons that still have interest in Abaco. We're, we're thankful that persons still remember Abaco. It's a proud moment. Now the royals ended their visit here on Abaco on a high note by getting a taste of Bahamian cuisines and shaking hands with some residents before heading to the airport to go to Grand Bahama. It was then time to sample some local cuisine. The Duchess trying her hand at dicing the conch for the royal salad. Thank you. Prince William also taking a liking to freshly prepared sky juice. And of course, there's lots of handshaking and warm greetings. Reporting for our news, I'm Brothany McDermott. 
Deputy Prime Minister Chester Cooper telling reporters today about what he hopes the royals will take from their historic visit. Cooper saying he is happy that the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge will get to see Dorian's destruction up close. We're seeing some rebuilding and that's good. I'm happy to see that. Uh, but to be sensitized to what we experience here uh, and to take the message back home that uh, the needs are significant uh, because of the impact that we, we have seen from, from hurricane followed by COVID. So the world always know that the Bahamas is a prosperous country. We have a high GDP per capita uh, and they oftentimes put us in that, in that box. But the struggle has been real. The Deputy Prime Minister was also asked about Prince William's comments about Caribbean countries moving away from the monarchy in the future. We are our own country. We're independent. We're proud people. We're celebrating our 50th uh, next year. I'm looking forward to the celebration of independence. We're very proud people. Uh, our children understand that there has been a struggle for advancement uh, through majority rule, through the independence uh, fight, and we continue to build a nation. The royals were guests of honor at a state reception on Friday evening at Bahamar. The Duke and Duchess having an opportunity to meet and mingle with major political figures, including former Prime Ministers Perry Christie and Hubert Ingram, former Governor General Dame Marguerite Pindling, and a list of who's who in politics, religion, civics, sports, and entertainment. Prime Minister Philip Davis using the occasion to, to thank Bahamians for helping to make this visit so special for the Duke and Duchess. The Prime Minister also using the platform to speak to Prince William's interest and work in addressing climate change. I am delighted to see the Duke again. So soon after we met in Glasgow last November during COP26, the UN Conference on Climate Change. In continuing our discussion yesterday, <clears throat> I was pleased and impressed that we so fully you have so fully embraced and engaged with these issues, especially as they impact countries such as ours. While the threats we face are global and challenge all of humanity, I believe that the Duke and I share an abiding faith in the ingenuity and ability of human beings to overcome these challenges by coming together and working together to do the right thing. Governor General His Excellency Cornelius Smith also publicly welcoming the royal couple while speaking to the decades-old relationship between the two countries. We in the Bahamas, therefore, highly value our special relationship with the United Kingdom, and your visit further emphasizes the friendship which is so meaningfully binds us together. Your Highnesses, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I believe it's important to note that the Bahamas has been graced by visits of our royal family on 17 separate occasions, dating back to 1959. Prince William, in turn, thanking the Bahamian people for their hospitality and recalling how he once snorkeled in the beautiful waters of the Bahamas as a child with his late mother, Princess Diana, describing it as the best holiday ever. What he said next, signaling the progressive position the Crown is taking towards the sovereignty of its former colonies. We support with pride and respect your decisions about your future. Relationships evolve, friendship endures. Tonight, we gather to mark another milestone. I'm delighted to be able to convey to you all a message of good wishes from my grandmother, the Queen of the Bahamas, on the occasion of her Platinum Jubilee. Meanwhile, invited guests mingling in the Bahama Ballroom last night in a glitzy black tie affair that was just the right mix of excitement and friendship. Jerome Sawyer was there. There were the familiar and favorites like the Bahamas National Youth Choir and Ali Akoli providing the entertainment. and a gift to commemorate the occasion. Every time you look at it, you think of the Bahamas and you fly back to race again. <laughs> the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge warmly greeting VIP guests 
Prince William again displaying the warmth and charm that endured millions to his mother many years ago. Among the crowd, our royalty, Olympic golden girl Shawnee Miller Weibo. Great time to be home right now. Um, you know, I got to celebrate with amazing people a few days ago, and now we get to be a little bit of royalty here back at home. And so, yeah, it's, it's a great feeling. Bahamian NFL star, now neurosurgeon Dr. Myron Roll. Being in this event, everybody's dressed up, looking classy, sophisticated, being able to celebrate these individuals. Yeah, it's a great moment for the Bahamas, for sure. And of course, our own Keepers of the Crown. This is absolutely breathtaking. It is so incredible to be here. Um, obviously, the Bahamas and Great Britain has had a long and prosperous history. Um, and so communication is incredibly important between people and diplomacy is imp incredibly important between nations. You never really imagine, I mean, on a day-to-day -day basis, I don't think anybody imagines that they're going to meet the royal family. So I think that it's something to be proud of. And it's something for young girls even to aspire to want to do, to become elegant and poised. When I look at Kate, I see someone who carries herself really well, especially as someone who's interested in etiquette, as an etiquette coach. I, I definitely am inspired by that. I'm inspired by her work as well. As someone who is interested in youth development and children research, that's important to me as well. Ten years ago, Danny Johnson was a sitting Minister of Youth who welcomed the younger royal, Prince Harry. He says these times are requiring different interactions with the royals. It just brings up a, a discussion we have to have with ourselves in the 21st century. People are gone now with the idea of owning people and I own this place and this mine. Uh, that's, that's 20th century. In the 21st century is partnerships. The official delegation including a familiar face and the wife of the Prime Minister, Anne-Marie Davis, also in good spirits despite the hectic schedule. Being excited about it all is one thing. That gives me some of the energy I need and um, just staying positive and um, getting some sleep. <laughs> in our next report, a look at the fashion parade of the night. Reporting for our news, I'm Jerome Sawyer. And still ahead tonight, find out the training initiative for backyard farmers to help bring them further into the 21st century. And later, sports in paradise, how the tourism chief plans to make the world see the Bahamas. Sporting events haven. That's coming up when our news returns. watching our news welcome back more commercial training is in the pipeline for farmers according to the bahamas agriculture and marine resources institute bamsey chairman tyrell young explains that many backyard farmers would benefit from sharpening their skills uh, some of the main concerns with the farmers are that when they bring their crops to market the distributors have some issues with the quality or the presentation the packaging um, the nutrition facts, that those, those are some of the issues that the, the, the uh, farmers are facing when they uh, present their products to the distributors. So those are some of the things that we're trying, uh, trying to iron out now so that they could be more uh, prepared for the commercial markets. FAMSI President Dr. Aresia Hepburn describing the training the farmers will receive. At this point in time, we don't make the supply. We don't. We can't meet the supply needs, really, and honestly. So one of the things that the chairman um, and I sat down and talked about is how would we assist farmers in making the supply needs. Some of the issues that the chairman just brought out about ensuring that we can have traceability, food safety, those things. We are going to put on good agricultural practices classes so that farmers would have the ability to actually be trained have this know-how and then be able to then take their certificate along with their produce to the producer, um, to the distributors so they could ensure that they actually were following good agricultural practices. When our news comes back from the break, the Ministry of Youth and Culture relaunches its job readiness program and we've got a look at your weekend weather forecast when we return.
size at 6 foot 5. Hi, this is This is our news weekend edition. Welcome back. The Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture relaunching the nine-week job ready program designed to curb the effects of youth unemployment by providing an opportunity to learn marketable soft skills and personal development tools. Minister responsible Mario Boleg says his ministry recognizes the importance of programs such as these in building a more skilled labor force. It is a mandate of the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture to continue to provide opportunities for youth to put themselves on the right track through soft skills development and on the job training. These two participants in the program telling our news what they're looking forward to once the court is complete. Just knowledge to be honest and how to start a business I guess but the skills to show me how, how to get the incorrect part to start in the business, no air up, but just to go in the right way. On the heels of the World Athletics Indoor Championships, where the Bahamas won two medals, a gold with Shawnee Miller Uibo in the 400 meter and silver with Devin Charlton in the 60 meter hurdles, Minister of Tourism Chester Cooper telling the media this past week that sports tourism will be a thing again for the country, dubbing it as sports in paradise and noted that him, along with Prime Minister Philip Davis and Minister of Youth, Sports and Culture Mario Boleg, are all committed to making the world see the Bahamas as a sporting haven. We've been inviting many different uh, types of sporting events to our shores, and we find these to be a great uh, draw for tourism to our country. We look forward to the opportunity once more to attract the IWAF relays, uh, to the Bahamas, and I understand that we are going to be making an effort to, to do just that. The tourism minister adding that sports ambassadors have been engaged to ensure we attract large sporting events to the country. There's no better way to, to bring tourists to our shore than a purpose. So a tourist with a purpose will come again and again, and uh, sportsmen and women will bring their families uh, they will bring their, their children and their friends, uh, which is good for, for the Bahamas. So sports is a key component of the touristic offering. Uh, we have engaged many sports ambassadors uh, to work along with tourism to attract new events to our country. Rain, sun, sand and sea during the royal visit. We've got a look ahead in your extended weather forecast. And the Royals visiting Avaco today to look at how they experienced island life when our news returns. Welcome back to our news. And now let's take a look at weather for the next few days. Abaconians still feeling the pinch of Hurricane Dorian were not left out of the royal visit. The royals totally enjoyed themselves while there. We're going to leave you now with a bit of their visit.
Thank you for joining us for our News Weekend Edition. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Kendino Knoll.